Back with you on Hitting Hard with John Chuckery on Locked On Sports Atlanta. We do remind you, head over to our YouTube page. Of course, you put in the browser Locked On Sports Atlanta. Give us a like there. Subscribe to the uh, channel. Uh, rate us. Tell us what you think. Give me some comment and some feedback about what you see, what you like, what you don't like. I do read uh, all of the comments. And, of course, I want you to follow me on my Twitter page. That is at JMCH316. We uh, continue with the uh, morator- or the uh, memorial, I guess, uh, if you will. I don't know if that's the right word, but Hawks get blown out 110-86. That, that I do know. Now they are down 3-1 in this series, coming back to Miami on Tuesday where the Heat could wrap this thing up. Um, I don't think the Hawks are – not only do I not think the Hawks are coming back in this series, but I think the Hawks end up losing on Tuesday. This season is what it is at, at this point, and it does – it does bother me in a few ways. You know, I, I said we would talk about Nate McMillan. You know, these last couple of nights where the Heat have made some of these big runs, Nate has been very hesitant to use some of his timeouts. If nothing else, just to stop the momentum. I mean, the Heat the Heat were on a 21 nothing roll on Friday night, and nothing really happened. Heat got on another big roll last night in the first half of that game. They actually, that scored the Hawks 30 to 15 in that second quarter. And Nate didn't use his timeouts then. And while I like Nate McMillan, um, there is a lot of his past, um, you know, digressions that are coming out now. There's a reason why he was fired in Indianapolis. There's a reason why they were, what, like 3-16 and or something in his time there in the playoffs. And I know last year was a magical season. and, And Nate McMillan could do no wrong, right? Well, this season's not been all that great for Nate. You know, every night when you're hearing about defensive effort and this and that and this guy and that guy, well, Nate McMillan's the guy who controls the minutes. I mean, if you're telling me that it's effort and guys aren't putting up the effort that you want, aren't you the guy that controls all that? Isn't that the one thing in the NBA that a head coach can do and influence is the minutes that you play? I always remember having these conversations. I got a chance to work for a year on radio with the great Sam Mitchell, former NBA player, former NBA coach of the year with the Toronto Raptors. Remember when he had that great run with them, then also coached in Minnesota after Flip Saunders died. And I always remember him talking about that, hey, there are a lot of things that coaches can't do, but there are a few things here or there that coaches can do. And there are things that coaches can influence. And Nate McMillan himself, if you remember, He and Gary Payton were one of the greatest defensive backcourts in the history of the NBA. Nate McMillan was a terrific player, and he was a terrific defensive player, you know, probably overshadowed by Gary Payton because he was called the glove. But Nate McMillan was no slouch when it came to defense. So why is his team so bad? Why are they so bad defensively? And and, and why is he so hesitant at times to use his timeouts to break momentum? I don't know. But I do know this. If, if this is sort of where they're at next year, if the general manager or the head coach is going to end up going, because this is not, it's now becoming, and, and I said this earlier, and, and I hate to think about it like this, but it's becoming like last season was a fluke. It, it looks like now that there were some things that came together. You also had some favorable matchups, you know, like the Knicks to get started. You had some things that fell your way with the 76ers with, you know, their favorite Instagram model, Ben Simmons, who's not now, now he's not even going to play in game four. Uh, honestly, he's as tough as wet tissue paper. That, that's how tough and resilient he is, is put some tissue paper in a, in a bucket full of water, pull it out and see how long it lasts for you when you got to wipe your car down with it. That's Ben Simmons. Things worked out last year. And uh, you look now, I, I hope it's not a fluke. I hope that this is not something that we look back in a few years and say, well, that was a pretty good one-year run that the Hawks had. This offseason will be monumentally important for the Atlanta Hawks. This is going to be, you know, and and we throw this hyperbole out all the time, right? This is the most important offseason in franchise history. No, this is the most important offseason in franchise. Not because it's the latest most important, but... If you're going to capitalize on your first real superstar that you've had, and with all due respect to Joe Johnson or some of these other guys, talking about your first real superstar, difference-making superstar that you've had since Dominique Wilkins, 
you have got to put together a capable roster and you've already signed some. You've got Capella locked up and Herter locked up and Collins locked up and Trey locked up. Now you have to put your big boy pants on and you have to take that next step up and put another star with Trey Young. As tough as that may be, because hell, every team in the league wants stars, right? But you're teetering on this being a fluky run from last year. And that's what bothers me about it. I think the Hawks are a better team. You've seen the Hawks at times when they line up against the best competition in the NBA, they win. They beat the Phoenix Suns when they were the hottest team in the NBA. Number one overall record. Ten straight road wins. Bop, 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 bop. You've seen them line up. At, you know, these teams you're watching right now, Memphis and Golden State and Phoenix. Hawks beat all those teams at home. Hawks beat all those teams at State Farm Arena. But the Hawks also lost to the Houston Rockets at State Farm Arena. The Hawks also lost twice to the Detroit Pistons this year. It's maddening. And, and this series has been a micro. You know, Trey Young, <clears throat> Trey Young had one shot inside the three-point arc. That's not one. One shot inside the three-point arc. He went to the free throw line one time. It wasn't even he drew a foul on somebody. He shot a technical. And he was awful from three-point land uh, in the game. Last night he finished uh, three of ten from the three-point line. It was a bad night for your superstar. And he said after the game, well, you know, they're collapsed and they put all these guys on. Okay, number one, they've done that all series. Well, they switch and they pick up. Okay, you had Clint Capella back last night. Don't you start to pick and roll? And don't you have to get perimeter ball movement and get shots for your guys, open shots? If they're double and collapsing you, somebody's open. Somebody's standing there wide open. And there's Bogey, Herder, Gallo, Hunter. You know, they're lined up around the perimeter. Move the ball around. How about design a play, Nate, to get the ball moving? You know, Colin, they're all standing out there. It ain't, ain't like you got guys cluttering up the middle of the court that they can double you up high and there's, you know, everybody else is just find something. Coach better, play better. But these excuses are just Trey Young's a superstar. He is. Okay, he should be an all NBA player this year. And to hear him kind of talk about it's not like the Miami Heat are doing anything different. It's not like that this isn't how the Miami Heat play. It's not like that, to be honest with you, they have a good roster, but the Miami Heat are not a great roster. They're not out rostering the Atlanta Hawks right now. They're not a roster that is just so full of stars, but they have an unquestioned leader. In, in Jimmy Butler, they have a great sixth man that's consistent every night in Tyler Hero. I, I don't know if he won sixth man of the year, but he was up for it. Gives you 21 points off the bench. They have tough guys. They're a tough-minded, defensive-minded team, and they bring that every single night. What are the Hawks? How do you define them? I think at times they're soft. I think at times they're not resilient. I think at times that they're a bunch of excuse making. And I also think that they're very talented that when they get their act together, they can play and beat anybody in the NBA, anybody. And they have done that. You pick any Western Conference team, the Hawks have lined up and, and can beat them or have beaten them. You pick any top tier team in the Eastern Conference, the Hawks have and can line up and beat them. But they're being outclassed. They're being outcoached. They're being outplayed, not because their roster is so much more talented, not because they have so many more guys than the Atlanta Hawks, not because they have so many better players than what the Hawks have, and not because they're healthier and without injury. They didn't have Kyle Lowry last night. How much money does he make? $30 million? How much is Kyle Lowry getting played to be one of their stars? He didn't even play last night. So... This has been a frustrating experience. We'll obviously have a lot of chance to break down the offseason. And unfortunately, I think that's going to start Tuesday night for the Atlanta Hawks as they head back to Miami. They're down 3-1. to one. All right, when we get back, um, it is NFL Draft Week. How you feeling? Excited? 
Let me give you my thoughts about all of this. It is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery. We are Locked on Sports Atlanta.